but like most of you out there that was a kid in the 80s and was a big fan of video games, the Atari 2600 was probably the first video game console you ever played at home. Uh, I mean, I know there were others before that, but they, they never really reached the popularity and success that Atari did. And for, for me, born in 1983, the, the 2600 was the first console I ever played. Um, my dad had one. I think he got it maybe 1980, 1981. It was before I was born. And believe it or not, I still, to this day, I still have it. It was the old black Vader system. They, they called it Vader because it's all black. And if you know anything about the original release of the Atari, it, the original release, they called it the Big Sixer because it was, uh, it, as you notice, the Vader had four switches. The Big Sixer had six switches. They, they, each switch did different things. And the, um, the original Ataris had the, the wood grain finish around the outside because for some reason in, in the 70s, everything wanted to be wood finished. I mean, TVs were built into a wooden frame for some unknown reason. That's just how they did it. But anyways, um, it, it, that Atari still works. The controllers and everything that I have with it, I still have all my original stuff, all my dad's original stuff. So I have a, a, a soft spot and a lot of nostalgia for the original Atari 2600. And when I saw that this thing came out, I said to myself, I, I really don't need it. Because if I really wanted to, I could play that Atari. But if you guys know anything about old consoles, which I'm sure you do, they're very temperamental. They don't like to cooperate most of the time. And even if you get the thing running, and especially like on a, on a 4K TV, it just doesn't seem right. If you are able to even get it running, you have to clean the games out, you know, and then a slight breeze comes through the room and, and the game flashes. So, most of the time I play Atari, I play it on, like everybody else, on an emulator. I mean, the Atari 2600 was my introduction to arcade classics like Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, you know, unfortunately those are both uh, pretty notoriously bad ports. But as a kid in the mid 80s, I, I didn't go to arcades at all. So, you know, Pac-Man was one of the games we had as a kid. Donkey Kong, uh, my buddy had. But as a lot of people, those were my introduction to a lot of these great arcade games. Now, don't get me wrong, the Atari has some fantastic games on it as well, like Pitfall, River Raid, uh, Star Master is one of my absolute favorites. I mean, Activision had a ton of great games. Yeah, you get games like E.T. and, and, and things like that that kind of give the system a bad reputation and, and even with its limitations and Atari was very very limited especially looking back it still had a lot of good games on it so when I saw this I figured you know what why not just pull the trigger on it let, let it I want to play my original games on original hardware it plays 7800 games as well and I know that Atari 7800 just was released the 7800 plus and I had to make a decision because I already owned the, the 2600 in its full console. I never owned the 7800 and I always wanted one. And not only did I buy this, but I also bought a set of paddle controllers that go into this because my paddle controllers do not function anymore. This also comes with a bonus game. Comes with four games, Breakout, Canyon Bomber, Night Driver, and Video Olympics. But it's cool because it does come with a game. So it gives you the incentive to buy this. Along with the Atari console itself comes with a uh, another game, a 10-in-1 cartridge on it. So if you want to buy these things and you don't have a collection of Atari cartridges and you want to play original hardware style as opposed to just emulating it, these things come with two games. This was an extra $30. And the 10 games that come in the uh, 2600 Plus, Adventure, Combat, which was a pack-in game, Dodge em. Haunted House, which is a fantastic game, Maze Craze, Missile Command, Real Sports Volleyball, Surround, Video Pinball, and Yars Revenge. If you know anything about the 2600, those are 10 very, very good games and great games to put on here to get you kind of the feel for what the system's all about. Okay, so looking at the back of the box here, what comes with the system itself is the 2600 console, comes with one joystick, you know, the uh, the Atari joystick, the one, the famous one button joystick, comes with a 10 in 1 cartridge, comes with an HDMI cable, makes it easy to plug in to your TV, and it comes with a USB power cable, which makes it easy to plug in. As opposed to, you know, if you're playing the original system, you know how these things are. You got to get all sorts of adapters and everything just to be able to hook them up 
getting them to play on a HD TV is, is it's kind of a pain. So we're gonna open this thing up, we're gonna take a look at it, compare it to the original, and then I'm gonna hook it up and we're gonna try it out. So the first thing I notice here about this, and you could easily tell from the box, it's very, very small. <laughs> I mean, it is three quarters of the size of the original. And like I said, obviously that was, you could tell that just by looking at the box itself. But looking at it, I mean, feeling it, this thing feels exactly, exactly like an Atari. I mean, it's light like the original Ataris were. It's got that textured feel all over it. Like it's not smooth plastic like the original Ataris weren't. They're rough. Yeah, I mean, the switches and everything, they're all the same size. Look at that, I mean, TV type, color, black and white, you got your power switch. Yeah, your game select and your game reset, all the switches react exactly the same as the original version of Atari. Look, this thing's even set to black and white. And of course, they went back to the original look, that wood grain. Like I said, man, they, they, everybody loved that in the 70s. And it also has the, uh, the orange outline around the controls which the, the Vader version did not. But if you look at the back, that's where you plug your controllers in. You have the little switch right here, which uh, that's just ratio on your TV. Your difficulty level for both players and then your, your ports. But yeah, your HDMI and your USB ports. But if you look at it compared to the original, there you go. There's your switch. Although that was, this is your, like I said, that's your ratio on the new one. This, it, it was <laughs> which channel you were actually playing it on because it that mattered back in the day. Yeah, you have your controller ports, your difficulty for both players, which is kind of crazy. But uh, yeah, the back of the consoles look exactly the same, minus of course the, uh, you know, your up-to-date charging cables. But that's the, uh, that's the console. Look at this thing. I love it. This thing looks fantastic. I mean, the detail on it, it, it's spot on. It's like they took the four version wood grain console and just shrunk it down. So we just got the controller out of the box. And yet again, I am blown away that this thing feels absolutely 100% identical to an original Atari controller. I mean, and it even... As you saw on the back of the uh, console, the plug-in connection is exactly the same as the original. So I'm going to go out on a limb, and I don't know this for certain, but I'm going to bet that you could plug this thing into an original Atari, and it would actually work. But yeah, I mean, it's it's again light like the other controller, like the original, and we and I just so happen to have one. Here's here's the uh, original controller from 1977. So to look at the two, the first thing you'll notice is the button is a little bit different in orange. And it looks like the joystick, try to get a good shot on this, on the new controller is a little bit shorter. But the dimensions on the controllers themselves, exactly the same. I don't, you know, the cable length is probably a little bit longer because back in the day for some reason, they used to make these controller cables really short, but that's why the power cables and everything on the Atari was, they were about a mile long. But I mean, it feels exactly the same. The button feels the same, the joystick moves around perfectly. I, I'm actually very excited to use this thing. All right, here's your, your packing game. It's a 10 in one. You can see the 10 games that are on the front. They're all pretty good games. I mean, a couple of them, you know, combat, Adventure, Haunted House are, are some are very highly regarded. I mean, you know, some of the other ones, real sports volleyball, eh. video pinball is okay. I mean, but for a packing game, all 10 of these are good. They're all playable. I mean, obviously left out some of the, uh, the legendary games, but due to licensing, I'm not surprised at all. These are probably games they, that they clearly own the rights to, but it's not too bad. 
and you can see each one of these games has a different pattern that you put in and on the back of the cartridge itself it has this little these little dip switches right here that uh, you obviously put in a specific order to play whichever game you want so yeah the game itself I mean it's look at that it's even got the little card in there I mean this thing is exact to a uh, an Atari 2600 cartridge again it even has that rough feel to it the only the only difference is the dip switches on the back but yeah got the end label I mean the shape the weight everything about it you know it's got the little pins inside there to keep it into the system yeah it's uh if you didn't know any better you would think this was an official Atari game so the last thing we're going to look at here before we get into a little bit of a demo at before I hook this thing up and see how it plays is the the add-on paddle controllers that I bought that again comes with an additional cartridge but I'm going to look at the uh, we're going to check the controllers out and see how they stack up to the originals well here they are there's your paddle controllers it feels again like everything I keep repeating myself but it feels exactly the same as an original paddle controller and if you ever held one in your hand they're extremely light very cheap probably why the wheel itself used to get so worn out but I mean it feels the same the wheel itself has actually got a little bit of resistance on it which is good so and I think that's what's wrong with the rest of mine is the wheel just goes so quickly that it just on screen it just goes insane but again you got your really long controller and the crazy thing about the Atari paddle controllers was they used to give you two so in a lot of these paddle games you could play four people which I think Video Olympics might support that. All of these might, I'm not 100% sure. But I, I do remember games like Warlords, you were able to play four player, and you used to have to have two sets of controllers. And if you did, then, then you could play it. But again, looking at these controllers with two original official controllers, I mean, there's not much difference other than the fact that these are completely worn out and as I bet most Atari paddle controllers used to do. The sticker, as you can tell without the reflection of the light, is a little bit more vibrant of a gold color, but again, that could just be due to the age of these things. I have no idea. But again, these things are exactly the same. Last thing we'll look at is the uh, pack-in game with the controller set. Of the four games, same thing. Set of dip switches. I actually want to try some of my older games on it because I would love to play Kaboom. Which, if you're familiar with the system, Kaboom is one of the best paddle games. One of the best games in general on the system. All right, she's all hooked up. I'm gonna turn her on. Oh, the cool thing on the front of the console, the Atari logo illuminates. Yeah, that's pretty cool looking. So I set the dip switches to Yar's Revenge because I'm very familiar with that game and I figured why not just try it out since I know how it plays. It'd be a good demonstration. The switches on the console do the same thing as they used to. This game select obviously selects your game. The button gets into the game and here we go. I mean, <laughs> this feels exactly like I'm playing Yours Revenge. It, it, I've never seen it looking so good, though. I mean, playing it in HD, yeah, it, it, that's crazy. The only thing I don't know is does the black and white function on the console actually make it black and white? We will find out. No, it does not. But either way, it plays great. The controller feels awesome. It looks amazing. Even a very simple 2600 game in HD looks great. Looks far better than it did when I had my original console plugged in. So we're gonna try out one of the paddle games and then we'll wrap it up. All right, I got Night Driver hooked in here. I've never played it. Figured it'd be pretty cool to try out. And on first look, again, in HD, it looks great. And here we go. Oh man. <laughs> Paddle handles very well. The game, my God, it's so hard to see what's going on. And in typical fashion, you get a crazy Atari explosion. 
Wow. It's not easy. But I guess you have as many tries as you want until you run out of time. I think it just crashed right into that house. I noticed the cool thing about this, and maybe it does work on some of the games. Black and white function works. So how freaking sweet is that? Some of you guys might be going, why would you want to play it in black and white? Well, that's how a lot of us used to play it back then on little black and white TVs. So I just wanted to try that out. We're going to wrap this thing up. Uh, to wrap this thing up, I'll, I'll keep it kind of short. The nostalgia factor on this thing just hits you like a ton of bricks when you start playing it. I mean, just the feel, the look of everything is so spot on. Uh, I mean, for me, like I said, 200 bucks for the bundle. It was worth every penny. I um, I, I paid for it myself. You know, I, it just wasn't given to me for review or anything like that. But so you know that my opinion is is actually honest because if the thing sucked and it wasn't worth the money then I would have absolutely have said so. You know, how well will it hold up over time? Who knows? Um, it's probably not gonna get a ton of play like the old one used to because I have so many other ways to play games and so many other games to play where back then that original console you had was pretty much all you had plus, you know, maybe the five, six games if you were fortunate to have that many. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm, I, I really, really enjoy this thing. I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. I would recommend this to anybody. I would also recommend getting this if you are making the purchase. It's absolutely worth the extra $30 because you get the paddles, you get the extra four games. Um, I did try my original hardware games on it. They work perfectly fine as it's advertised. The original controllers plug into this thing, they work. So if you have any of that kind of stuff, it works perfectly with this thing. As do if you have 7800 games, they also work in this. Um, the reason I bought this over the 7800 was just the pure nostalgia of the 2600 and, and how iconic it is and its place in video game history. I know the 7800 didn't ever really take off. Atari kind of peaked with this system. The 5200 to 7800 really didn't meet expectations or sell nearly as well as this. I mean, obviously you had a lot of competitors out there at that point. But anyways, if you're looking for a great retro system to play, and you want to play on, on like I keep saying, original hardware. I mean, this is about as real as it gets, unless you go out and buy the original, but this thing plugs right into your TV with an HDMI cable. The picture looks fantastic. The sound is fantastic. It's so much easier to hook up. Every, everything about it feels great, feels original, and I am 100% sold on this thing, and would, like I said, would recommend it to anybody. So thank you, everybody, for watching, and if you have any questions, if you want to know any more about this thing, anything I may have missed, leave it in the comments below and I definitely will answer you because I do reply to every single comment, even if they're bad. But I do try to respond to everybody, so if you have a question, it will definitely, definitely get answered. So thank you everybody for watching and check out some of my other videos if you like this kind of stuff. I'm all about retro, video games, arcade games, cartoons, movies, you name it. I, I do it all, so consider subscribing like the video and I will make more stuff like this as I get it and thank you everybody and we will see you next time